Hi fellow animators, I'm Miloš Černý and today I would like to continue with the second part of our octopus tutorial in which we are going to animate the simple swim cycle. We are going to start right where we finished in the part 1, so if you didn't watch it, you should do that. But if you want to skip part 1, you can just download the rig in the link below the video and continue with that. Ok, so let's create an empty absolute animation layer. And rename it to Swim Cycle. Don't forget to hit the play button, because we have to be in animation mode, not setup mode. Change our timeline to maybe uh, 60 frames, which should be enough for a cycle like this. Let's start with animating a pelvis. Set auto key on, so we don't have to set keys manually every time. And keyframe the pelvis at frame 0, as well as at the last frame, so the animation will stay looped. At around frame 20, let's move pelvis up a bit. And preview what we got. Not bad, but could be better. Let's add a bit more kick into it. Open up curve editor. And as a first thing, go to out of range types and loop every parameter of the bone. Now select just the z-axis of position and make it go a bit slower at start and faster as it goes up. Ok, that's better, but we should add a bit overshoot as well. Great, that looks much better. Now let's do something with the legs. And again key the beginning and the end of the animation. Don't forget to set out of range types to loop again, soon you will see why is that useful. Around the same frame as with pelvis, rotate all the bones around their local y axis so they meet in the middle. You can even overlap them a bit, it will be compensated later. At the first frame do the other extreme of the legs, when they are up, and by shift dragging copy the first frame to the last one so they stay the same. Let's see what we have. Mm, we are getting somewhere, but it's not good yet. Bones don't move all at the same time in real life. That's why we need to offset each row of the legs relative to each other. So select the second row of bones. And move all the frames forward by 3 frames. Because we have set our out of range types to loop before, you can see that the animation will stay perfectly looped even when it's offset it from our 60 frame animation. Do the same with each row of the bones, but each row has to be moved 3 frames further than the previous one. You can see that the overlap of legs is getting fixed as well. Now when we play the animation, we can see it's 100 times better. Ok, now we need to offset individual legs a bit. So select all the bones of one leg, select all the keyframes in curve editor, even the ones outside the 60 frame window, and move them for example 3 frames to the right. Select another leg and move it by a random interval, for example 3 to the left. Another leg, two to the right maybe, next one let's say one to the left, and we need to do this for all of these legs. Now legs will not move all at once and we can again get some more variations in them. Ok, it's starting to look pretty nice, but we are still missing the head animation.
Turn off auto key, so we can offset the head for the whole animation. And not just set a new key. Now turn auto key back on and set key at the last and first frame, as we did several times before. At the same frame as we did with every other bone, so in our case 20, rotate it back a bit. And let's see. It moves exactly aligned with pelvis, which doesn't look too good. So let's set out of range type to loop again and offset it a little. Uh, this looks even worse, so maybe offset it to the other side. Better, but a little too much. I am showing you this process, because with animation, you often have to just find the optimal look of something, and sometimes it is faster to just try out those different versions. Now let's give it similar easing as we did with pelvis. That looks fine. Ok, so now maybe we want to rotate the whole rig, so it's swimming sideways and not up like this. Copy and paste the layer we just did. Rename. And maybe even change the color. Now turn auto key off and activate layer transform gizmo. And we are done. This is just a very simple animation, you could spend much more time with it for sure. But I just wanted to present some basic workflow when working with CAD and animation in 3D as Max in general. So I hope you learned something and that it was useful to at least some of you. I am Milos Czerny and thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to keep track of the new videos. Or at least leave a comment or a like. Thank you.